Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing American Resources stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. American Resources main business is to supply raw materials to be used in creating steel, metals, and electric power. The company is headquartered in Fishers, Indiana and was founded in 2006. It went public in 2017 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. It owns several coal mines in Kentucky and West Virginia where the coal is used by its clients to build infrastructure. The company has worked with scientists and universities to build a more efficient process. In the mining industry there tends to be a lot of waste. They are trying to eliminate that waste. They also supply materials for use in EV cars. As the EV market becomes more prominent, so will this company. It uses chromatography to isolate metals, which is better than the alternative, using harsh chemicals and acids. That's bad for the environment. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 180 million market cap. They're trading at $5 a share and they have 36 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They also have negative net income every year. Revenue is a sales for the company and that's the lowest in a trailing 12 months at $9 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. And they have negative gross profit every year except 2018. Below that is operating expenses, then below that is operating income. And they have negative operating income every year. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt, then other income and expenses. So the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, and that's negative every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. Since they have negative free cash flow every year, they need money from somewhere to run its business. They issued 8 million of capital stock in 2019 and 3 million in 2020. When a company issues capital stock, this increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. They've also been issuing debt to run their business. 4 million, then 8 million, then 9 million, then 9 million. They did pay down a little debt, but not nearly as much as they're issuing. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If you cannot generate positive operating cash flow at some point, you don't have much of a business because you cannot rely on debt and equity financing to run your business in the long term. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash. Net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. And to calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. Even though they reported a $49 million loss, they actually only lost $13 million of cash flow. Let's look at the capital structure. They have negative $34 million of equity. That means their liabilities are $34 million more than their assets. And they have $34 million of debt. So they're 100% debt. Their WAC is 8.8% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value which is all cash flows past year four. that's 900 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 686 million dollars. We divide that by 36 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $19. They're trading at $5, so they're trading at a 74% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street's valuation is $36, so they're saying the stock is even more undervalued. This company is expected to grow a lot the next few years. I did not think their growth would be as aggressive as analysts predicted. 
So this is my future free cash flow estimates, but I'm still coming up with a stock price well above what they're trading at. This is the stock price since it last IPO'd and it peaked at about $12 a share and it's come down a lot, but it's been coming up the past few weeks. This stock may have a really big run. So if you do get a really big return, I would say capture those gains because this is a really volatile stock. It will be going up and down, I have a feeling. And they have a negative beta. You don't see this too often. That means the stock moves opposite the market. The stock has gone up almost 600% in the past 52 weeks. The S&P 500 went up 30% in the same time frame. The 52 week low was 57 cents. The high was $8. The stock is trading above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. About four to six million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 36 million shares outstanding, 16 million are on float, 8% are held by institutions, and about 5% of the shares on float are shorted. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd, you would have been at over $100,000 at one point, but if you're still holding on, you'd be at $50,500 today. That's a 55% annual return. The CEO is the biggest shareholder, Mark Jensen, at 15%. Then two other people connected to the company are big shareholders. Golden Property owns 8% and Thomas Shelton owns 5%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 9, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. When a company has negative PE, you look to the price to sales ratio. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 20.2. So investors are paying $20 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They have negative equity, so they have negative price to book. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, negative net income and negative equity, so we can't look at the ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can only cover 10% of their current liabilities with their current assets. So it looks like they're going to need to do another capital raise or issue more debt to fund their business over the next 12 months. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 74% discount, but it's really hard to value this company. This company is so different from other coal miners. They're really trying to use technology and innovation to get ahead of the game. If they're successful, the sky's the limit, but only time will tell. There's always competition. When you listen to the CEO talk about the company, you think it's gonna be the most amazing, innovative, successful company. There's always bumps in the road and things don't always turn out the way you want them to. So I rank their free cash flows one out of 10, their revenue one out of 10, and their ratios one out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.